A warm welcome to this launch webinar of the, where we will present the version 20 of the Human Protein Atlas that we have named a 20 year journey into the body. My name is Matthias Ullen and I am the director of the Human Protein Atlas. In the version 20 of the Human Protein Atlas, we will add a lot of new features and we will not be able to go through all of them today. However, we want to highlight some parts of this new version. And I will start with the journey uh, reflecting about the first 20 years of the program. Then Cecilia Lindskul will go through a new single cell type atlas that we are launching today. And then Jan Mulder will talk about a map of the human prefrontal cortex that we also launched today. And then Ulrika Axelsson will say a few words about the new subcellular localization, the nucleola rim. And finally, I want to show you some images that we have done with this fantastic and exciting 3D image technology called light sheet microscopy. So first I want to talk a little bit about the first 20 years of the Human Protein Atlas since we are celebrating that uh, this year. The Human Protein Atlas program started 20 years ago. The vision was to map all the human proteins using data-driven life science and to create an open access atlas of the human protein both for researchers in academia and industry. And the main headquarter for the program is the SciLife Lab in, in, in Stockholm. Uh, but we also have important uh, affiliations at the Uppsala University, Karolinska Institute and Chalmers. And as you can see on the map, we also are collaborating with people in Asia. So we have tried to create a map of the human proteome. This is, of course, important, we feel because proteins are the building blocks of human biology. They are the targets for almost all pharmaceutical drugs, and they're also targets for future precision medicine efforts. So the question that we are asking is, what are the building blocks of cells, tissues, and organs, and what are the targets for future drugs and diagnostics? All humans, have approximately 20,000 genes coding for proteins which are responsible for all functions of life in the trillions of cells that constitute the human body. In our kidney cells, proteins that filter our blood are produced. In the brain, proteins aid the formation of our memories. In blood cells, immune-related proteins are made to combat infections. Understanding human proteins is essential for understanding human biology and disease, to comprehend human health, and to develop better treatments for illnesses. When we explore the world in new ways, we discover new things about us, about life itself. In order to celebrate the first 20 years of the HPA program, we today publish a uh, digital booklet to get with science and AAAS, uh, going through the first 20 years of the program. Uh, in this booklet, we highlight the major milestones, actually 35 of them, and go through uh, what we have achieved during these. 20 years. But the journey really started almost exactly 20 years ago with the press conference in the White House by Bill Clinton where they announced the sequence of the human genome. This of course gave us a blueprint for human biology and diseases and this was of course very important for us trying then to go to the next level and try to understand the proteins coded from the genome. So I will not go through all the milestones that have been achieved uh, during this journey. 
uh, but just to to uh, highlight some of the milestones. And one was, of course, the start of the program in 2000, where we decided then to try to make antibodies and to analyze all the proteins uh, coded from chromosome 21. Uh, three years later, we got funding from the Wallenberg Foundation. And uh, in 2005, then, we were able to launch the first uh, human protein atlas portal containing information for about 700 proteins. Uh, five years later, we've come sort of halfway. Uh, we call it the 10 in 10, where we had information for 10,000 proteins uh, then delivered in 2010. Uh, and we then started to use all the antibodies that have, we have been generated in the program so far. One of the major milestones on this journey is what the milestone 21, and that is the re launch of the Tissue Atlas in 2015 uh, <coughs> with a publication in Science. This publication now has more than 5,000 citations, uh, and it, it relates then to the analysis of proteins in different tissues and organs in the human body. Since then, we have published other parts of the human proteome. Uh, uh, most of these articles in science as articles. We had the subcell profiling in 2017, the cancer atlas in, also in 2017, a blood atlas, in the end of 2019, a brain atlas in March 2020, and a metabolic atlas in April 2020. So in total, we have published more than uh, very close to 600 publications from the HPA group during these years. What have we then achieved during these 20 years? So this is just a summary of some of the achievements. Uh, we have generated about 55,000 antibodies in-house that we have analyzed. About half of them, 21,000, has then gone through our very strict validation criteria and has been used in the protein atlas. And they have been used to create more than 10 million images, uh, pathology, immunohistochemistry type images. Uh, which are then available online in the portal. We've also done a lot of uh, validation experiments and so on, and we estimate that there is about 70,000 experiments that has been done during these years by the HPA consortium. We have, as I said, created more than 10 million images. These are microscope images from the human body, uh, and this means that our effort is probably one of the world's largest efforts to generate tissue images. So since the release of the tissue atlas and also the other additional uh, sub-atlases, we are very pleased to see that we have an increased number of visitors to the database, and we now have more than 300 visitors every month. So what have we then learned during these 20 uh, years uh, of the HPA? Well, uh, one important thing is that we are now estimating that about 10% of the proteins uh, coded from the human genome are housekeeping and are thus needed in all dividing cells. Uh, about 15% of the proteins are specific. We call them tissue enriched and present uh, in only one or, or a few tissues. And these are, of course, very interesting proteins to study further. Uh, also importantly are the proteins that are secreted out of the cell. We call them the human secretome. About 13% of the proteins are secreted, but only a third of these are secreted into the blood, according to our estimations. So with that, uh, I now want to turn over and uh, we will then talk about the new features 
of the version 20 of the Human Protein Atlas. And I will hand over now to Cecilia Lindskog. We'll now introduce a completely new section that we have added to Human Protein Atlas as part of the version 20, the Single Cell Type Atlas. In this new major section, we have used single cell RNA sequencing data from 13 different human tissues and blood, and together this covers a large proportion of different cell types that can be found in the human body. The analysis was then integrated with antibody-based protein profiling, and together this constitutes a high-resolution single cell type map of human tissues with single cell data at both the mRNA and the protein level. Based on the single cell RNA sequencing data, we have pooled the data from each cell type cluster and calculated the average normalized protein coding transcripts per million. And in this way, we were able to visualize expression profiles for each gene in each cluster at both a genome-wide and a single cell type level. This then allowed us to classify all the human protein coding genes according to cell type specificity. And in this way, we can highlight which genes that are elevated in particular cell types in comparison to all the other analyzed cell types. The analysis showed that the highest numbers of elevated genes were found in testes, ciliated cells, and retina. And this is consistent with previous findings on a body-wide level using bulk transcriptomics. As part of this new effort, all human protein coding genes can be explored in the new single cell type atlas, where one can study the expression across 53 main cell types and 192 individual cell type clusters. The data is presented as interactive UMAP plots and summarizing bar plots. And here we see the expression of KLK3, the prostate-specific antigen, that was shown to be highly expressed in clusters that represent glandular cells. The cell type specificity and spatial localization can then be confirmed at the protein level by studying the high resolution images of human tissues stained with immunohistochemistry. We also described the cell type proteomes in 12 different knowledge chapters to summarize the genes expressed in these different cell types. And here it is possible to learn more about each of these cell types, the elevated genes, and see different examples at both the mRNA and protein level. In addition to genes that are elevated in one particular cell type, there is another group of genes that is particularly interesting, the group-enriched genes. And here we find genes that potentially share similar functions. A large proportion of the group-enriched genes were found in germ cells, in testes. And here we see one example that was group-enriched between spermatids and ciliated cells in bronchus. And these are both cell types that are related to motility. We can then also confirm the cell type specificity at the protein level and see the expression in, for example, the cilia and the flagella of these cells. So in summary, we have provided a new tool for discovery of expression patterns in single cell types, both at the mRNA and the protein level, and this opens up for many new research questions. Thank you. Thank you, Cecilia. And now we will listen to Dr. Jan Mulder, who is the head of the HBA Brain Profiling Group. The human prefrontal cortex is a new database added to the brain atlas in version 20. During evolution, the size of the prefrontal cortex dramatically increased in primates. The prefrontal cortex is involved in many higher cognitive functions, involving reading and processing of emotions, decision-making and risk-taking, and speech. This makes the prefrontal cortex one of the most interesting regions of the human brain. We now provide a detailed overview of all protein coding genes in the human prefrontal cortex. This data set is based on 165 microdissected samples from three male, three female individuals, including 17 subregions of the prefrontal cortex. In addition, frontal, temporal, and partial cortex samples are included as reference. In addition to data on protein expression in the human, pig, and mouse brain, users can now zoom in and explore gene expression in subregions of the prefrontal cortex. As expected, many molecular features are shared between these closely related regions, including the expression of the GABA synthesizing enzyme glutamate decarboxylase 1, also known as GAD. However, some genes are differentially expressed between regions, including translocated protein TSPO. Altogether, these data allows users to explore their genes of interest and link these to prefrontal cortex functions. Thank you, Jan. 
Uh, and now we will listen to Ulrika Axelsson, who, who is the team leader of the HPA Cell Atlas. As part of the HPA version 20, the Cell Atlas is releasing annotations of proteins that localize to a new subcellular compartment that we refer to as nucleoli RIM. Our interest in the RIM of nucleoli started thanks to a citizen science project called Project Discovery, in which the participants helped us mine all the cell atlas images for novel patterns, including the nucleolus RIM. The PhD student Lovisa Stenström then took a deeper dive into the nucleolar proteome, finding evidence that the RIM of nucleoli is a relevant subcompartment of nucleoli. At this point, we have found 159 genes that encode proteins with this localization. The nucleolus is a compartment within the nucleus that is responsible for the assembly of ribosomes. These ribosomes in turn have a fundamental role in the synthesis of all proteins. Despite not being membrane bound, nucleoli exhibit a remarkable amount of internal organization, including the granular component, the dense fibrillar component, the granular center, and now also the nucleoli rim. The nucleoli rim lies at the border between the granular component and the perinucleolar chromatin. The function of the nucleoli rim is still unknown, but many of these proteins relocalize to the perichromosomal layer upon entry into mitosis, where they seem to act as a barrier between the chromosomes and the surrounding cytosol. Similarly, the nucleoli rim may serve as a barrier between the nucleolus and the surrounding nucleoplasm. Moreover, these proteins tend to have a high degree of intrinsic disorder, indicating a high degree of flexibility and potential for protein interactions. Indeed, they are also ultimately positioned for modulating interactions between the nucleolus and the surrounding chromatin. We hope that this map of the rim of nucleoli will inspire future studies to elucidate its functions and thus gain better insights into the multifaceted roles of the nucleolus. So these are just some of the new features in the version 20 of the Human Protein Atlas, but we do have also a lot of other features that we don't have time to talk about today. Uh, including a new version of the dictionary that can be used for educational purposes to learn more about tissue images and cell profiling images. But finally, I just wanted to take you through a journey into the human body using 3D image technology. Uh, we are launching these movies today. Uh, and these are 3D movies created by Dr. Shaba Ador in our group, and they have been produced together with Fakta Bruket here in Stockholm. And I first want to show you two short movies, one about the pancreas and one about uh, the heart. The pancreas produces enzymes to facilitate the digestion of food. It is also responsible for regulating blood sugar levels with insulin. A malfunction in insulin production leads to diabetes. In this 3D movie of the pancreas, insulin, shown in green, is stored in the pancreatic islets of Langerhans. In red, we see the nerve fibers forming a fine network dispersed throughout the whole pancreas, surrounding the blood vessels and the islets. The 3D image enables detailed investigation of the islets and nerves, their interaction and detailed locations within the space. The heart provides the entire body with life-giving oxygen via the blood. It requires a constant supply of energy delivered by the coronary artery network. In this video, the artery network is stained in red. 
and the 3D microscopy technology allows us to journey inside the inner parts of the heart. The heart also has an extensive network of nerves seen in green, signaling to the heart muscle when to beat. Cardiovascular related diseases are one of the leading causes of death worldwide. By studying the heart in 3D, we can learn more about the coronary artery and nerve fibers. Today we launch 11 uh, movies about the different parts of the human body, but also some neurological diseases. Uh, so please go to the website and then watch the different uh, educational videos. We are also launching a microsite uh, in order to celebrate the 10 to 20 year journey into the body. In this microsite, one could get access to the different movies, but also facts uh, about what and milestones that has happened during these 20 years. Uh, and I thought I would show you one of the journeys into human neurological diseases uh, from this microsite. Alzheimer's disease is a chronic neurodegenerative disease that usually starts slowly and gradually worsens over time. In this 3D movie, we begin to explore the early stage of the disease in the locus coeruleus region of the brain, containing both healthy neurons as well as neurons with accumulations of the protein tau, stained in red. Alzheimer's disease has been identified as a protein misfolding disease caused by the accumulation of abnormally folded proteins in the brain that form plaques made up of amyloid beta peptide and tangles of tau protein. Here we see the combination of tau in red with amyloid plaque in green in the cerebral cortex of the brain. Finally, we look at the amyloid plaques in detail, here in red, together with neuronal cell bodies in green. And the vast amount of amyloid plaques is evident in the Alzheimer's patient. So with that, I just wanted to acknowledge all the researchers that has been involved in this project throughout the 20 years. Uh, there are more than 600 researchers that have contributed to the ATLAS and we are all very grateful for their, for their outstanding work during these 20 years. So with that we're coming to the end of this uh, launch webinar. I hope you feel inspired to visit the uh, version 20 and also explore the new features that we have introduced in this uh, new edition of the Pro Human Protein Atlas. And with that, I just want to show an image of the, the, where we, uh, the headquarters of Human Protein Atlas, the Science for Life lab, uh, you can see to the left here. And, and uh, again, I want to thank you for listening to this webinar. Thank you very much.